It's the next day, and I think I know what I want to do about mounting the rails in here. So the box does present some complications, namely these indentations, the convexities I've been calling them. It means that I can't directly mount the rails up here, and if I mount them in here, then I'm losing some space and it's just kind of ugly and weird. So I already knew I was going to have to make some kind of frame, sort of a, a cheek set, they would call them, of plates that they screw into and then that mounts somehow in here. So then the next question of was at what height? Because this is really deep. This is seven and a half inches or something, uh, much deeper than the case needs to be. So I could lower the rails down in here and have them more around this level. And that would be nice for traveling with it because that would give me like two, two and a half inches of space on top. Because when the lid is on here, this is the surface of the lid. There's no room inside the lid itself. So if I want room for cables, so I don't have to remove all the patch cables before putting the lid on, I need that space in here. And there's room for that. But in terms of normal usage, I'm not sure I like that idea. Like, I don't know, I got big stubby fingers and it's already a bit tight reaching in to get cables and get to knobs. I don't want to have walls on all sides. It's sort of have it back in a cave is not going to help that at all. So I was thinking about that and unsure what to do. And then I realized, hmm, what if I just make it more complicated? That always helps. So now I'm thinking, what if I make a system so that the rails in their frame can be moved up and down? So during normal usage, it's up here, but then should I want to travel with it, I can drop it down that two, two and a half inches and lock it back in place. So that's what I'm going to try and do. I have this aluminum, it's a bit thinner than I would like, but I think it'll work. And I'm, I'm trying to use stock from the scrap bin as much as possible. I, it's a bad habit just always ordering custom metal. But cutting, I want to cut out of that some cheeks that look kind of like this with two big slots in them. And then I'll have some T-nuts that ride in those slots. And over here, I'll drill two holes with thumb screws on the outside. So you can lock it in place. And then when you want to adjust it, you loosen those screws out there and the whole thing is now just floating and can move up and down until it's whatever height you want. So it's either a great idea or a terrible idea and I guess we're about to find out. hoping it was close enough in that it wouldn't deform too much, but this is just so thin. So I'm going to have to reposition it between cuts. The only reason I was doing that was so that I could hey, be in a single coordinate system for making this slot and then this slot. And that would be convenient, but it doesn't work, so it doesn't work. Setting up for the next slot, I've moved it over so that's now well supported and it turns out I can just get far enough over so I can at least establish off of the same corner, establish the coordinate system. So that relieves a lot of my concerns. Um, the, the mill technically has another 9-12 inches of travel except this <laughs> desk is right up there. As you can see, I've taken the handle off, off of here to get it as close as possible, which um, I do sometimes. I need to rearrange stuff, but at the moment, this is the best I can do. So on to the next slot. Here they are all cut out. It's a little bit fuzzy still because the protective sheeting's still on there. I don't see a reason to take that off yet, but uh, I think they came out pretty well. So now I need to make the T-nuts that will slide along there. I was just going through the scrap bin and found this chunk, um, which I can drill out to, this is a bit over a quarter inch now, so I think I'll go for a uh, like a 5 16 drill it, thread it, clean it up, 
chopped in two pieces. Then we'll go to the mill and uh, cut the, uh, the the T the inverse slot on it. <laughs> yes, it's an inverse slot. the key nuts and they, they fit really well. Um, I suspect some of you noticed this long before I did, but for some reason I was only making two of these and I needed four. I don't know how I did two times two equals two, but I did. So uh, back to the lathe, I guess. So we're back to where I thought I was last night. Um, I have four T-nuts. They slide nicely in the slots. Free, but uh, not loose. They're a little bit thick, which I always assumed they would be. So I'm going to get back on the lathe and uh, clean these up a little bit. This is the same stock I was making the second batch out of. I purposefully drilled it a bit deeper and tapped it a bit deeper. So I was able to just screw in a, a spare screw here, cut that off, clean it up a little bit. And now I can take each of the T-nuts and screw them in T side down, because we don't want to mess that up. Put them on a mandrel like that. Now I can make them a bit narrower, and I think I'm going to put a, uh, a taper on them, just to make them a bit smooth so they don't snag stuff on the inside. That is very pleasing. So these look like they work pretty well, which is great. So now I need some thumb wheels to tighten them down and loosen them from the outside. I could, of course, just buy some. It, they're just started for 5 16 18. But uh, what's the fun in that? Why would I have a mill if I just wanted to buy cheap plastic crap? Particularly, why would I have a dividing head if I wanted to do that? Thumb wheels have to have fairly shallow tapped holes in them. And unfortunately, I just have two taper taps in uh, 5 16 18. I, uh, I should have considered this when choosing which slides. I just kind of randomly chose this early on. I didn't think it through, and I should have. Um, but what I'm thinking is, this one is one I've been using, and it's been feeling a bit dull. It's reaching the end of its life, and there's this shiny new one. So what I'm going to do is grind off the first couple of millimeters. So there's still a little bit of a taper, but not as much as here. So then I will tap as much as possible with the good one and then follow up with this uh, improvised bottoming tap. And we'll see how that goes.
it took some back and forth. I had to grind the tap down even more. But I've got maybe three full reel threads in there, and this feels solid enough. I'll be lock tightening the screws in place, of course. If I really crank it down, I think that'll be pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, finish doing this thumb screw and then the other three. Time to drill the holes in the case itself for the uh, the adjustment screws. It's a little bit tricky to find a uh, reference here. I put down tape just so I wasn't leaving uh, scribe marks on the case itself, but I was able to use this to get a nice horizontal reference. And after working out the math, it was almost exact. The, the, the line that I wanted here was almost exactly three quarter inch below that it turned out. So I found a nice chunk of three quarter inch stock that I could push up against there and get my reference line. So then I had this nice horizontal line. I was able to find the center using dividers. I kind of had to walk it in because it's a little bit longer than what I had, but it worked. So then I had a center point. And then the mounting points are eight and one quarter inches apart. Uh, I apologize for the Imperial, but it's just easier sometimes. Um, so then just four and an eighth out from this on either side. And I have my mounting hole points. I ended up doing something a bit different than what I was planning because I realized getting keeping access to these RCA ports was going to be hard that way. So instead I milled off the bottom of this rail flat and drilled and tapped some holes in it. So it's the tank is screwed into place in those three places and then um, screwed to the side plate through this standoff like I was originally thinking. I think it came out pretty good. Last thing though is I need to mill off the this bit of the flange because it's projecting on this side of the uh, the rail and could interfere with some modules so i'm going to do that and this part will be done the tank is now fully mounted as far as i'm concerned it's time to think about the uh, 1U rails. They already have mounting holes on this side on that plate, but there's nowhere to do that over here. So I'm going to make another little aluminum plate that'll go here. It'll bolt to the tank. That'll be its main attachment point. And then they'll have the mounting holes for the two rails. And then they'll also have another two holes up here for the, uh, the thing that's going to span the open gap up here. So like this, but aluminum. Here's that plate in the process of being fitted. Have all the holes drilled. Now I'm just establishing where the rails go so I can drill the holes in the rails after milling them down to length, just a little bit at a time until they fit nicely. Not 
my preferred way of doing things, but uh, too many weird, hard to measure sizes around here. I just got to fit it as I go and it'll, I think it'll come out okay. Here's the 1U rails all in place. Um, this is all done. I have the holes ready to fill this gap. Matching ones over here. I'm going to do that with this chunk of aluminum. It's a bit overkill, obviously. Um, but my goal is eventually to make this into a molt, I think, or some other simple utility function. Like, there's no reason a module has to be a module. It can just be built into the case like this. So, uh, giving it some rigidity I thought would be nice, because if I'm eventually plugging and unplugging stuff in there, it'll have to be kind of robust. So, just getting it down to length right now. Then I will clean it up on the mill so it's a little bit more presentable. my desk in its more or less permanent location. I don't know if I'll ever use the, the portable nature of it, but it's good to know it's there. I do really like having the springs and the reverb tank accessible, been having a lot of fun with that. I'm not going to demo it for you, not quite yet. I'm not like great at it yet, and honestly I'm not the most musical of people, but I'm really enjoying playing with the technology, so I think I'm going to keep at it. So there it is, my custom Eurorack case. Thanks for watching everyone and stay safe.